Good morning, everybody. Mike Bakke, PrincetonTrader.com, here with your Friday morning jobs morning pre-market webcast. Okay, September the 1st, we got the jobs report coming up uh, about a half an hour. It's about 7.56 Eastern time as I'm taping this. Look, we talked yesterday. I actually want to show you the daily chart first. So, daily mid-band test, up and over. That put us back into buy the dips, right? We're, we want to be above five minute mid band, we follow through, we continue to follow through overnight. This is gonna walk up right into the jobs report. We've traded as high as 77. We have gotten over the top of some of this resistance we were discussing yesterday at 73, 74. It puts the 2488 half, new all time high in jeopardy, which is what I said a few days ago. You know, if, if they blew daily mid band and we turn back in to buy the dips, you're going to see a new all-time high it's gonna magnetize so we spent basically all of yesterday long with the exception of, of seven minutes being short 67 half which I dumped for a handle and a half flipped long at 69 and then we had a nice trade up into the close and all we did last night we last night we didn't do anything we had we had a risk marker at 69 for anybody that wanted to do anything but I would imagine, based upon what I've looked at and what I woke up to this morning, is that people just kept on fighting this thing all night long, and now they've been fighting it for three or four days now, and now they are in, you know, a tremendous um, pickle, and they have, you know, they've been squeezed. People are covering, uh, you know, the whole deal. So it's. Um, you know, this is what happens when the bulls take back control of the market and people fight it. We grind higher and we continue to grind and continue to grind. So will there be some gigantic sell-off after the jobs report? Probably not. Uh, if it is, then that's something that I would be interested in getting short if it can create some lower highs. Do a lot of, are a lot of people hoping? Yes. And when all that collective hope comes together, it tends to turn into yet another short squeeze. So you've got um, you got 24.88 half on the upside. The bulls need to do a new all-time high. They don't have to do it today. They can do it on Tuesday, but it needs to get done. Um, the bears have to convert something that matters, and they haven't been able to. I mean, even the you know you look at the hourly mid band here. I mean, there's just no, there's no achievement by the Bears. Um, you take a look at a five-minute chart from yesterday. And I don't normally do rant videos. It's not my thing. Um, but, you know, I came out yesterday and just did a minute on, look, the market doesn't want to go down. It wants to go up. Um, that's out on Twitter and Instagram. It's just kind of a wake-up call to people. It's like, look, it just doesn't want to. It do doesn't want to. So there's your 2421 low back on Tuesday. And you can see VWAP and you can see our proprietary moving average and how prices just kind of tracked it all the way up. It's been a very reliable indicator of who's in control of the market. And until the bears can start to live below this area, I'm not particularly interested in shorting it. I mean, what I told my folks yesterday was, look, until it can convert the five-minute mid-band, the proprietary uh, moving average and VWAP, I'm not giving you any short trades. I'm just, I'm not. You may want them, but I don't really care. And that kept us long. We were long 62 half, then we were long 64 half, and then we were long 69. That's a much better way to spend your day when the market doesn't want to go down. Don't fight price. Don't fight price. Trust, trust me. When... This thing turns, there will be plenty of handles on the downside because it'll be real. When the market's doing this, all you do is get these little three or four handle pullbacks and it just sucks everybody in and then they ramp it. That's what happened yesterday when they went and printed 6675 uh, and they immediately rejected and got it up to 68. So the last thing I'll leave you with is this, jobs at 830, don't game jobs. Don't walk in at 829 and go, well, I think the reaction to the jobs report is going to be X. Or I think the jobs, the reaction to the jobs report is going to be Y. You don't know that. Nobody does. Nobody knows what the reaction is going to be or what the spin is 
from the forces that actually move price in this market. And that's not me, that's not you, that's not anybody that, that, that we know, basically. Um, there'll be a reaction range that's created on the upside and the downside. We'll either trade lower highs versus the top of that range or higher lows versus the bottom of that reaction range. We'll break out or we'll break down. That's the most risk responsible way to trade any big number. It's the technique that we use with the jobs report. It's the technique that we use for the Fed. Um, and it's, you know, it's served us very well and it's been very profitable. If you come in at 829 and say jobs is going to do A. If it does A, that's great. You'll probably take it off for four handles and you know tell everybody how right you were and then move on to the next trade. You'll probably short it and then give it all back. If it does B, you'll hold. You won't get rid of it. You won't exercise risk because the fact that you thought it was going to be A, it's a trade based upon what you think. It's a trade based upon wanting to be right, not about what price or risk is telling you. And that one you'll hold into oblivion. So basically there's very little upside and tremendous downside. So don't do that stuff. Okay? All right. Everybody have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic Labor Day weekend for everybody over here. Um, I will do one more video during the course of the day. We'll see how this plays out. And I will talk to you then. Trade them well. Follow us over on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Princeton Trader. Check us out on Facebook and join us for a free trial at www.princetontrader.com. Trade them well.